Hello. Welcome to my office. Which is in Cumbria this week. Bit of a departure. Long way from Devon. Um, but it was a, a family event that got cancelled. It was a wedding. Got cancelled because of Kung Flu. Um, so my wife and I, we had accommodation booked up here. We thought, you know what, we're going to use it. And so we've had a few days away up in the Lake District. Marvellous, except for the bloody weather. But, you know, we're England. We'd love to moan about the weather. Anyway, enough of that. This video is about a Freelander 2. In this episode, I'm going to be reassembling the back end of the car. It's not an instructional video. It's more about the pain and the aggravation. I tried to highlight the problems I had with this thing, um, rather than doing a step-by-step -step instruction on how to change a rear wheel bearing. What a swine of a job. Anyway, I'll also be getting onto the front end of the car, which is really replacing the front wheel bearings, which, um, for some reason, one reason or another, is actually cheaper to buy the entire knuckle that attaches to the bottom of the strut than it is to buy just the wheel bearing. Uh, and bearing in mind, you need to take the knuckle off the strut in order to attach the wheel bearing to it. It just seemed crazy. It's like 50 quid cheaper, a corner. So, yeah, I'm going to be putting the whole front knuckle on the corner of the car. And as you'll see, it's not without its challenges. Anyway, enjoy the video. Give me a... I like those. Give me a... I'm less keen on those, but if you feel that way, can't please all the people all the time. Contact me, Church House Classics. It's all one word, at gmail.com. Um, if you've got similar problems or you want advice or you want to contact me, I'm there. I'll do my best to answer you. Um, as you can understand, uh, I get quite a lot of emails in um, and I may be away. Um, so I can't always respond within you know the minutes after you've sent it. Not that anyone's ever complained about that. But yeah, I'm quite happy to get back to you when I do get back. If you fancy supporting the channel or plain buying me a pint, then there's a PayPal me link down there somewhere in the description below and thank you very much for everyone that has supported the channel or bought me a pint um if i've helped you in any way whatsoever feel free to help the channel it all you know kind of goes towards me improving the channel and, and continuing to do these kind of broadcasts so enjoy this video Right, let's get this bearing back into the hub. Good old tractor. Bearing back into the hub. Now, the manual suggests that you push the bearing in with the hub that way up. Um, I'm not gonna do that because I've got no way of supporting the back end of this thing, I don't think. Uh, and also, um, so the thing is you've gotta be careful of this magnetic ring, I'm guessing. Have I got a big cut that goes over the back here? Oh, yeah, still not big enough though, because I've got this fucking great thing here. Um, it might work. Oh, that's even better. That's even better. Right, this little bit of thinking outside the box here, Richard. That to be that one. God, I'm sweating today. Now I could potentially mount it that way up and push the bearing in, I'm guessing. I can't go any wider across here. This is gonna to need to hang over the side of the press. Let's relocate to the press and see if we can do anything at all here. Right, let's get you looking over here. I've got my DJI filter back. So we can uh, irritate the swallows and the swifts today. Now that it's not far out. If I raised up a bit higher, I've got these two blocks as well. So what I'm basically doing is not just that piece. I've also got these blocks here. You see. Bomb. Bomb. I mean, no, I don't like that quite so much. Let's put those together like that, and then like that. Will that work? 
Do you know, I think it will. I think it will. I think that will work. It's quite stable on there. Um, the housing is not touching the, uh, the, the, yeah, the, the press itself. I'll just move that out a little bit. I want to make sure everything is lined up and central because I don't want to be damaging casing. Um, a little bit of cloth. I keep losing here, it's over here. Just wipe the inside face off. Now I need to push this thing down. I don't think it's going to require a huge amount of tonnage to push it down. Um, it's blimmin' warm today. Get out of this end of the workshop as quick as I can. Um, the key thing about these is you've got a black surface on one side. That's magnetic. That's to do with the ABS. We are recording, aren't we? Yes, we are. That's to do with the ABS. Um, that needs to go face down. Thus. Okay. Um, now I want quite a large ring, I think. Let's start. Right. It's going to be a gentle job, this one. What I'm going to do is just put a little bit of grease on the inside edge of this housing and I'm going to put a little bit of grease around the outside of the bearing just to try and ease its path into the hub black side down might work no, that's not big enough I want really to be pushing across the whole face of the bearing. That one's good. Now, let's see what happens. Go down. it now. I'm not going to push too much further because I don't want to damage it. And put this C-clip on. Not C-clip, what are you talking about Richard? Sir-clip. Sir-clip. Whatever the clip's called, I don't know. Brian. Call it Brian. Shall we call it Brian? Let's call it Brian. We can call it Brian. Right, let's move you around to the bench. back over here again. We'll leave that setup on there because we'll probably use exactly the same setup when it comes to putting the uh, hub back on. Now this should literally just click in. I've got a... What's my hammer gone? It doesn't actually need a huge amount of... I'm not touching the bearing itself. in, gone in, gone in. The circlip's in. Right, now all we need to do is push the hub on. Exactly the same scenario here, um, except what I don't want to do now is push the hub, push the bearing apart. So I might have to do this the other way up. I'm just going to get a cloth to get sweat out. We're not used to this humid 20 degrees of temperature. So what I might do here, if I position that onto the hub, push this down onto it, because I'm not going to damage that face there. And then on the back of this, if, I, if, I, if I'm going downwards, I need to find something that's going to push on this race in here. Oh God, how am I going to do this? It needs to be not touching the black bit, I believe. That one will probably do it. 
Oh, fuck it, let's give it a go. Um, so we'll take all this stuff off here now. Let me just, if I go back to the press. Press. Get all this crap off here, we don't need it. Go there, there. Um, put the hub on here, it's a little bit more central. Get the more room, put the things around if we have to. Uh, so the hub is there. Again, a little smidge of grease. Now, from taking this apart, I think the bearing has, bearing has to go right down to the seat here. I guess I could push it, you know, on, on the studs, but I'm likely to push the studs straight through. So we'll use that. Um, next, I want to position this on top. You know, that might work. It's a bit wibbly, so I'm going to have to support it, I think. So I'm pushing on the centre of the bearing. Mm. Hopefully it's not going to need too many tonnes. Squeak, 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 squeak. Centre just a little bit. So push it down in the middle. Push that into the middle. Now as it starts to suffer from the effects of gravity, I'm rather hoping it won't all self-centre. That's not self-centering though, is it? Let's hold that there. spins nicely. No play. Right, oh, it's 10 tonnes. That's going to be enough. It's always worthwhile just giving them a little bit of extra heave-ho, because obviously it wasn't completely seated, and that would have then caused a problem when it came to operation. Now that's all looking quite good in there. Let's take this off with that. You can come back around here again. Yeah, I think that's a success. No play. It's in. It spins nicely. No play. Right. Top tip time. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Um, right. We need to do this rear hub nut up to 270 newton meters. I think that's what it said in the book. Um, and in order to do that, with the wheel off, the best way of doing it is to brace against the, um, move you, brace against the floor with a, with a big old jemmy like that. And then I can position the torque wrench on. How about that? A lot easier, isn't it, than uh, poncing around with shit. Now, the, the, the other thing in the manual, I'm just going to double check it. It does say move it on 30 degrees. So I'm going to have to work out what 30 degrees is on there. That's fairly straightforward, just using a protractor. Then I can move it from the horizontal down to where 30 degrees is going to be. But we're done on this side. Handbrake's working. Um, brakes are working. Everything is tight. Been over, double checked absolutely everything driver's side rear corner, which is the only bit that didn't fail on the MOT, is finished. And the only reason I had to do this was because I had to replace the rear damper. 
you do one damper you do a pair right now let's uh get this wheel back on good lord we have used some profanity getting this old knuckle off god help us every bloody joint on this thing was sea solid but it's off um i didn't have a brake back plate on it because there wasn't a brake back plate um the bolt that holds or the screw i should say the torque screw sorry folks just walking around the torque screw that holds the um brake disc on see solid i ended up putting a foot long breaker bar on it. and those things normally just screw in finger tight now busted in solid and then the nut on the bottom is 21 mil i don't have a 21 mil spanner so i end up using a set of um uh, stilsons um with a four foot pole on the end of it um to actually get the thing to bloody move right well i think now we can start reassembling so we've got the lug on the back of here so i think what i'll do first of all i've got already got the, the splitter in there splitter let's put him up ah, that's going to need a bit of love or something ah oh, just fucking exhausted absolutely knackered it's 25 degrees this is honestly without a shadow of a doubt the worst job i have ever done in my life ever bar none this makes the bx subframe look like a fucking walk in the park i tell you i'm sure not all freelanders are like this well, i hope not anyway if they are then honestly still got another corner to do yet i've got another one of these bloody things to do that has just taken three hours to get that fucker off right let's have that in there a bit in here let's hope it takes me about 15 minutes to put it back together again because i'm all ready a day over schedule on this bloody job it's just not cricket I'm afraid come on you want to come up I don't really want to start bashing you but I mean about this thing it's hot and i'm struggling with every single little fucking tiny job <laughs> the manual says, simply undo the bolt and remove the knuckle yeah it's not even the haynes manual either 13 year old bloody freelander that has honestly tested my patience to the absolute fucking limit I don't think I can even jack it on that. It might work. I can go out the way. I have to get my. Just gonna jack it on me. Of course, my fucking needle is in the way now, isn't it? actually fucking going anywhere or am I jerking myself off here what 
we got on here that's causing the stickage? It's only gone up that, but you can see how far exactly how far it's gone up. Let's get that really should be able to go in there. Because the bottom of the um, strut is actually exposed um, underneath this knuckle. So while I had gravity to help me taking the old one off, I fought, you know, forcing myself against gravity, fighting gravity, that's the one, fighting gravity in order to get the new one on. going a bit further. We're going far enough. It's an easy fucking thing. Just drop the strut down and bang it on. Now it's getting tight again. It's going. It's just fucking slow. Cut. Ah. Let's try with the jacket. Here. Hammer gone. Oh, I'm for the time. Regularly. Ah. Um, and go medieval lever to get the bottom link down um, far enough that it can go back in because it's hole on the bottom here. I'm going to go and get a cup of tea. Right, a little bit of lateral thought on this, trying to get this bottom link uh, reconnected. Um, and what I basically did was lever from the top edge of the link. There. Look how much you kind of give you've got on there. So that is that, and that's in now. Ah, oh, what a swine. Right, I think now that's in, I am genuinely, I'm gonna go and get a cup of tea now. I've just been sitting here 
thinking about how it was I was going to get this done um, and pondering and not having a lot of fun over it. Right, now we've done that, we need to put the nut back on down there, pinch bolt back in. Um, oh, I can take that out now. There's my dirty lane there, because I'm going to leave that on the other side. Right, we move forwards a step. It's always good moving forwards a step. I mean, I've been, what is it, I've got no idea what the time is now. Absolutely no idea. I have no idea. Right, that's all located though, that's good. Right, time to start doing bolts up, I think. So you got to the end of it. That was the driver's side corner, I mean, pretty much from where I stopped videoing, uh, the rest of it did go together fairly easily. Uh, the drive shaft was slipped back in again. You replace the... There's a whole load of stuff in the Land Rover manuals um, about replacing bolts and doing this and doing that and every... Oh, it's quite a lot of it. <clears throat> and I think... I'm not sure, but some of the bolts are stretch bolts, but then the bolts that came out, I couldn't... They, they were hardened. They were toughened bolts on the front suspension, on the front... When the drive shaft goes through the hub, there's a bolt and a big fat washer. And it says, you must replace it. And I think it's only because it's got thread lock on it. Well, that seems particularly wasteful, doesn't it? Anyway, I did replace them. Um, caliper bolts were thread locked back in again. Um, and yeah, that front corner was done without too many problems at all. Now, I didn't video the passenger side front corner. It was the hottest day of the year at that point. <clears throat> I was underneath the tin roof in the shed. I thought, do you know what? The car arrived at half past nine in the morning. MOT was booked for two o'clock in the afternoon. I thought, piece of piss. So I thought, got straight onto it at half past nine. Managed to get the knuckle off the car within an hour. That's not bad going. So I thought, half past ten. We're okay here. The only slight problem was that when the knuckle came off its bottom mounting on, on the wishbone, um, the drive shaft was still kind of stuck, despite the fact I drifted it through, it was kind of stuck in the hub. So when the um, when I managed to get the knuckle off, um, it kind of sprung, the drive shaft didn't release, and it pulled the drive shaft inner section out of the cup. Now it didn't pull the drive shaft out of the gearbox, it just pulled the wheeled section out of the cup. They're ever so easy to put back in again. They really are. That wasn't a problem. I wasn't worried about that. But it did raise a problem, uh, which was the biggest problem I had in this corner, which was that the, I don't know why, but the shaft had been moving inside the hub. So the splines in the hub were all elongated. They were all kind of, rather than being nice, perfect teeth, they were all like that. So when it came to putting it back together again, I could not get the drive shaft to engage in the new hub. So I faffed around with that for half an hour, 40 minutes. And then I thought, I'll just pull the drive shaft out. So rather than taking it right out of the gearbox, because that would have just allowed all the gearbox oil to drain out and onto the floor, which I didn't want to do. What I did do uh, was just disconnect the, the clip on the, C, the inner CV gator. Um, and pulled the drive shaft back out again with its three wheels and kept it all nice and clean, and clinically clean and everything. And I couldn't get the drive shaft into the old hub either. <laughs> and that's when I noticed the elongated teeth. So obviously the old hub had worn to such an extent, or it was a cheap, nasty fucking pattern bar, or it was just Land Rover shite. But anyway, I couldn't get the drive shaft into the old hub or the new hub. And eventually I just kind of figured, well, okay, this thing's kind of, it got itself stuck when it was trying to come apart. Now that took me nearly two hours of fucking around to get that drive shaft so it went back in again. Um, it, I mean, it took me a long way to do it, but effectively what I did was I used a, um, a file, which ended up being an angle grinder with a flap disc, to go around the end of the drive shaft, around the end, which which the first bit that located. So I extended the chamfer on the end of the drive shaft. And then I had to go through every single groove, and there's about 78 of them, with a file, just to make sure that the groove was straight 
as it went down towards the chamfer at the front. And I didn't go berserk with the chamfer. All I did was put like a one or two mil chamfer right on the end of the drive shaft. And the drive shaft, you know, the, the spline section's like that. So I didn't weaken it in any way. But after about two hours, I got it so it did fit the new hub, but wouldn't go into the old hub. So by now, we're kind of getting towards midday. I don't enough. <laughs> I said to Claire, cancel your fucking MOT. It can go in on Saturday or um, it can go in uh, next week. Because I've just had enough of this bastard thing. This hateful fucking car. But I did manage to get it back together again. Then the problem I had was um, that the problem I didn't have on the passenger on the driver's side that I did have on the passenger side was I could not lever that lower arm down low enough to get the strut onto it. And there's no way would it do it. It was miles out. And yet the thing came off using the same jemmy and everything. I even watched this video again before I published it, of course, to see... You know, how did I do it before? Um, and that took me nearly 45 minutes of fucking around with that. And in the end, what I had to do with it was put spring compressors. Because I was looking through the uh, Land Rover official manual. And it uses a hulking great big G-clamp that connects between the strut top around the outside of the outer wing. And then underneath the strut... And what it effectively does is it compresses the spring yeah, and the strut. But using this massive tool. And I'm a massive tool for taking this job on. But Claire was desperate and she needed help. And oh, never again. Anyway, it was a... Oh. So I was thinking about that. And I'm looking at the... Well, okay, well, if, if I was to shorten the spring by, let's say, a centimetre. Take the load off the spring. It might allow me to shift it up so by squeezing spring compressors up into the spring turret I was able to compress the spring it's quite tight so if you look under a freelander there's quite a lot of metal work that goes around under the wheel arch around the spring so to get the spring compressor up there you kind of have, you can only put it up in the outside face the weak you know the tire side push it up and then swivel it around to get to either side then you can't get the spanner onto it so it was a faff but I did it of course, as soon as I can press the spring, then I could put the bottom link in. And then, after that, what was the problem I had after that? Oh, yes. Because I've been faffing around with this thing, with the wheel bearing, for so much effort, I decided to, um, against my better judgment, decided to undo, or try and undo, the nut on the top anti-roll bar link that goes onto the strut. I thought, I'll undo that nut, piece of bit, I'll undo that. Um, and then I'll be able to rotate the strut right round. So I can look at the back end of it. Problem I had there um, was that the nut wound off about four or five turns. Um, and despite me cleaning all the threads up and everything, so there was no dirt or crap on it and putting loads of lube on it, it would not go any further. I couldn't do it up and I couldn't undo it. <clears throat> so what I ended up doing with that is one of the bastard features of these Land Rovers is every single nut is a flange nut. It's a nut but it's got a big washer built into the nut itself. So you can't even put a pissing nut splitter on the fucking ungrateful bastard thing. So I ended up um, actually using a Dremel, it's a funny fly thing, using a Dremel to go across the head of the bolt, or the, the, the head of the, the, the stud as it was coming out of the, um, the, 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 the top of the anti-roll bar link cut directly down through that and ended up cutting through the nose of the nut. Then I put a nut splitter on it, which did square root of nothing other than just making a big mess because it couldn't cut through the flange for now. Then I got all medieval with it, <coughs> started shouting at it. We're going to start throwing tools around and then I decided, you know what, I'm going to go for a coffee. Should have gone for a bottle of whiskey. Anyway, in the end, I ended up putting, with all of those measures, with the, the cut going down the length of... So if you've got the bolt coming out, I went through it like that with a, with a little Dremel disc. Um, air cut off tool had done the same thing, but Dremel was what I had nearest to me. I could have used an air cut off, but an angle grinder was too big. You're too close to the strut. There's too much bracketry around it. You can't get an angle grinder in there to do it. 
Mrs. just came out wanting her supper. Anyway, that and then nut splitting it and then putting the 13 mil socket on my impact wrench and giving it some hefo while I had a jemmy behind it holding it, the nut came off. Now, luckily, I had a tennis racket, so I was able to knock that nut quite a long way. <laughs> it's in the middle of my father's field somewhere. It's, it's right in the middle. And as an archaeologist is going to find that in about a thousand years, I say, oh, look, that's a top link nut off a fucking Freelander. Because they'll still be cursing them then. Anyway, um, after I managed to get that dip done up, then I was able to finish the job. But I didn't finish that job. Stop, bear in mind, I started at half past... Oh, it's all kicking off around here. I started that job at half past nine in the morning. I finished it at half past two in the afternoon. So, what did I learn? Well, you might be saying never work on a Freelander. No, 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 I could work on a Freelander again. It's just a few basic rules. I think first and foremost, I would look to replace every single nut and bolt on the back suspension. So if I'm undoing the uh, the strut, I would look at replacing the fore and aft um, radius arm and the trailing arm nut and bolt, and then I'd just cut the old ones off. I'd just get the angle grinder in there. I wouldn't even bother undoing them. I'd just cut them off. I just put new, brand new ones on. <clears throat> um, so I think that's the first thing I would learn. Um, I think the second thing, really, so the handbrake was fairly straightforward on the car. Um, there was lots of stuff in the manual which wasn't that well laid out, actually, I didn't think. The handbrake was okay, though. I did fix the handbrake, which two other dealers have not been able to fix on that car. Um, and it was, I think, there was a big chunk on the passenger side, the, the mechanism that the cable attaches to. That was all mangled up so once i straightened that out i was able to adjust the handbrake properly and the manual does cover how to adjust it quite well that's not a problem <clears throat> when it comes to the front end front end of the car replacing those knuckles i just might be inclined to take the strut off the car i think by the time you've taken the knuckle off and bearing in mind the anti-roll bar link is probably going to be fucked anyway. Um, you've only got three nuts at the top end of the car that hold the whole strut in. Then you could assemble the knuckle and the strut and push the whole thing back into the car. And I think that would be a world less pain. As far as the drive shaft is concerned, um, I think that was just... I don't know. If you guys have had this problem before where you've removed a drive shaft from a, a hub and you cannot get the drive shaft back in the hub, um, you need to look at the splines um, and the only way I could fix that again would be to waste less time say right it's obviously stretched some of the splines are stretched chamfer off the leading mill or two mill on the end right on the end of the um, drive shaft and use a, a hacksaw blade really just to cut new new grooves in um, and my biggest lesson on this one is not go fix price on it I spent 18 hours on that car. 18 fucking hours. <laughs> but anyway, um, it's done. The car passed its MOT last Monday, which I'm delighted to report. Uh, Claire's happy with it. it. It drives much better than she thought it did. And the handbrake works, which is two other dealers have failed to fix for her. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's not been too traumatic. And I hope you're gonna be able, guys are going to be able to sleep at night and not worry about, you know, dreaming about buying a Freelander 2 accidentally. Oh, that should be a neat, nice, easy fix. It's only failed on a couple of front wheel bearings. You can buy the bits for 200 quid. Yeah, it's been two days fucking fitting them. Anyway, enough swearing. Sorry, folks. Too much swearing. Thank you. Thank you.